Uh, the first of which is Liskov substitution, uh, so-called because Barbara Liskov, who won the Turing Award in 2008 for her work on abstract types, uh, is generally credited with the formulation of what we now sort of take for granted um, as inheritance in object-oriented languages. And basically, she, uh, the, her formulation is, um, if you have a method or a function that expects an object of type T, then if that object has subclasses or subtypes, um, it should be legal and, and correct to pass any subtype of T to the function, and it should work just the same. Um, and I, I think I was, um, when she actually won the Turing Award, she gave a lecture at a conference I happened to be attending. And I remember there, was, uh, there were some students sitting behind me, and they put something like this up on the screen as a, you know, here's what Barbara Liskov uh, is winning the Turing Award for. And somebody behind me said, why would someone get an award for that? Everybody knows that's true. Anyway, th this really happened. OK, so um, the, it, technically speaking, the way that she was using the term type and subtype uh, in terms of formal language semantics is not identical to the way we would use class and subclass. But for our purposes, it's pretty close. Um, and since we know that in Ruby, uh, there's not really, there's no typing rules in the way that uh, a strongly typed language like Java has them, right? It's not illegal to pass objects of the, the wrong kind around as long as the interface that they export is correct. Nonetheless, the idea of substitutability still applies and is still an important idea. So uh, again, the, I'm going to show the examples in code right on the screen, but if you want to look through the examples offline, um, I put them up as GitHub gist, and you can follow the links on your own anytime. So here's sort of the canonical example of what can go wrong with Liskov substitution. I'm uh, simplistically assuming that I've defined a rectangle class. Rectangles have a width and a height and a location on the screen, which arbitrarily we're saying is the top left corner. You can create a new instance of it. You can ask for it, its area and perimeter. Or you can have this, here's a special function that will take a, a rectangle and make it tall and skinny. So while preserving the area, it'll make it just you know, twice as wide and, uh, or twice as tall, half as wide. And if you now say, well, uh, I also need a square, but really a square is just a kind of rectangle because in some sense, every square is a rectangle, although not conversely. Uh, so uh, a square, if we say it's a subclass of rectangle, we run into the problem that when we try to set uh, its height or width, um, the whole problem with a square is that those are supposed to be the same. Uh, the real problem is that if you try to pass a square to a function that expects a rectangle, and that function tries to call make tall and skinny, which is a perfectly legal thing to do on an instance of rectangle, uh, then square is in trouble because there's no way that it can realistically implement that. Right? So, of course, in this contrived example, the real problem is squares maybe aren't really a subclass of rectangle. We should have thought that out better. And we'll fix that in a moment. But the idea is to illustrate what can go wrong in that situation. Because even in a strongly typed language, if we had uh, declared square as a true subclass of rectangle, then from a type safety point of view, the compiler is concerned, it's perfectly legal to pass a square wherever a rectangle is expected. And yet, it is possible for the thing that you pass to be asked to do this behavior, which is totally incompatible with squares. So the sort of hacky workaround that you sometimes see for this is square as a subclass of rectangle will override this method, and it will do something like raise an exception saying, sorry, I'm a square, I can't do that. Um, but that's kind of a bad deal, because the whole point of a subclass is you do everything your parent class does, but maybe you also do some other things, or you specialize or override some of those behaviors. Right? So this is why it's, uh, this example is said to violate Liskov substitution. Even though square is declared as being a subclass of rectangle, it is not the case that it's always OK to use a square anywhere that you use a rectangle. So how to fix? Um, we'll show the class diagram version first, and then we'll go ahead and show it in code, which everybody understands and is warm and fuzzy. Um, but again, one of the common elements, and this came up uh, when we did the open-close principle and single responsibility, is there are many ways to misuse inheritance, and a lot of them can be addressed if instead you do composition. So remember what composition means. It means that we've got an object, one of whose components is an object of some other class. And between those two, between the containing object and the contained object, there can be some delegation of work. So basically, the, the insight here is there are many ways in which a square is like a rectangle. So what we could do is rather than having uh, what's on the left, this is what was on our previous slide, where we're saying square inherits from rectangle, um, that's not the only way that a square can reuse 
the behaviors or the work already happening in rectangle. Another way it could do that is what's on the right. Square is now a separate class. It does not have an inheritance relationship to rectangle, but we, tell, uh, we give square as one of its components an instance of rectangle, because then if you ask the square for things like its area or perimeter, it can delegate those calls to be done by the work in the rectangle class. It's no longer a subclass of rectangle, but it basically has inside of it an instance of a rectangle to which it can delegate that work. Um, and what does that look like code-wise? Here's the simple version. Uh, here's class square, which as you see, no longer has any direct connection to the rectangle class. But when we create a new square, and all we have to specify is the length of a side, uh, we will create a rectangle instance inside of square that has the correct dimensions. So that when you now ask the square for its area or its perimeter, all we're doing is passing those calls on. We are delegating the calls to the instance of rectangle. Now, square is no longer obligated to do something sensible when you say make tall and skinny, because it's not a subclass of rectangle. It is no longer assumed that you can pass a square anywhere that a rectangle is expected. You can still use a square in most places a rectangle would be expected, because maybe what you were really after is the idea of a polygon that has standard ways of computing its area and perimeter and has four sides. So you do want to selectively reuse some of those behaviors. And if square and rectangle implement some of the same methods, because Ruby has this nice duct typing concept, they probably are somewhat interchangeable. But you're no longer asserting that they have to be substitutable one for the other in the Liskov sense. Um, it happens to be the case that uh, if you're using Rails, which includes this active support module with a bunch of goodies in it, um, you can actually just say uh, delegate area and perimeter to some uh, attribute named by the symbol. So basically this says uh, if area or perimeter is called on an instance of square, look for a component of square whose name is rect, and there it is, um, and assume that that is an object that will be able to handle the calls. So it's a shortcut for delegation, but all it's doing is exactly what I've done here explicitly, which is I receive the call and I have somebody else do the work. Okay, so what's the sort of meta pattern here? Uh, it's that we've replaced uh, an example of using inheritance as a way to reuse work with instead the, comp the combination of composition, right? So we have inside of a square, we have an attribute that is an instance of a different class. Uh, composition plus delegation. We use that, it, that contained object as a way of delegating some work so that we don't have to re-implement that in Square. So we're sort of trying to get some of the benefits of reusing behaviors uh, that you would get from true inheritance, but without having to pay the price of true substitutability. A Square is not enough like a rectangle to make that work. Um, and by the way, uh, symptoms. Um, one, uh, one symptom is what's called a refused bequest. Uh, why is it called that? Because when you have a subclass, it is said to inherit all of the behaviors of its superclass. But in our example, Square was not able to inherit the behavior of making itself tall and skinny. So you'd have to do something to override that method in Square and raise an exception saying, I know I'm supposed to inherit that behavior, but I can't do that behavior. So it's called a refused bequest. Um, the other symptom is what's called shotgun surgery, where the way that you fix the problem is, well, uh, the real problem here is that rectangles should never have had this method. So I'll remove this method from rectangle, and then it's OK to just make square a subclass. You can do that, but now you've got to look for every place that used a rectangle and figure out if removing this method is going to have an effect in any of those places. So because you're sort of looking all around in your code and trying to find all the places you might have caused some damage, that's called shotgun surgery. Uh, so that is another symptom, if you find yourself doing that, um, that maybe the problem is it wasn't really an inheritance relationship to begin with. So to summarize, um, what does Liskov substitution say? It basically says if you're inheriting, you bought the whole farm. You have to agree that every behavior that your superclass does is something sensible that you can do. Otherwise, it's not really true substitution. Uh, if you find in your code that you are having to uh, come up with examples where you have to go out of your way to say, no, I can't do that for an inherited behavior, that's a likely sign that you are uh, doing a Liskov violation. And how do you fix it? Many times, the reason that the problem arises is that inheritance was not the right mechanism to begin with, that there is a better way to reuse the behaviors you want. And a very common way to do that is composition. You take the object whose behaviors you want to reuse, you make it a component of some other object, and then you selectively delegate some calls on the containing object to be done by the work of the contained object. 
Um, and that's what we did in our example. We just explicitly receive the call and just forward the call on to someone else. Okay, so composition plus delegation is generally the pattern.